Hey, what's going on everybody? Norman Muktaima under the lamp. Um, <clears throat> today, we're gonna do a thread Frenchie. So obviously you can see it here. Uh, this pattern is uh, developed or was developed by Lance Egan. And uh, I think you can find this in Uncle Feather Merchants possibly. So anyway, but I'll show you how to tie it and my variation. I don't know if these colors are actually what you can find uh, through Umqua. So anyway, let's get to it. Uh, obviously, you can see I've been tying a few. Um, so anyway, we're gonna roll with um, the Umqua jig hook. Uh, we're in the 403 on this one. XC400 would do just well. I have a bunch of these hooks and uh, ran out of my 400s, but uh, still a solid hook and um, still looks good. <laughs> so to start with, we're gonna run uh, Ultra UTC thread in 70 denier, brown olive. Um, like this as a base thread, obviously you can use a variety of different um, threads also, but let's just get started, wrap it right behind the bead and wrap down towards the bend of the hook. Trim away your excess. Um, this is a very simple fly to tie, which is nice. Uh, you can crank these out pretty quickly. Coke de Leon for the tail. And for this one, we're going to use oh, about, uh, it's anywhere like between 10 and 12 fibers, uh, roughly quarter inch material on the stem there if you if that's easier for you to for you all to gauge out rip the stem away make sure all your tips are lined up now the tail roughly about the length of the body so i'm looking at uh, the from the back of the bead to the bend of the hook so you know that's a different reference uh, as far as figuring out your dimensions so there you go about right where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this down, keeping my thread turns, uh, touching the turn previous all the way back to the bend of the hook, and then trim away my excess. <clears throat> now, we're gonna tie in the, the wire, and um, ultra wire, fluorescent orange. This can be a tough one to find. Uh, they stopped making it in this color, I believe. And uh, so if you can find it, pick it up. But hot orange will also work or even just copper. Uh, and you'll see once I set my UV resin when this is all done, why I do like the fluorescent orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually wrap in, or tie in, sorry, my uh, wire on my side. Wrap it all down, under, all the way up to the bead. And then I'm gonna just do a few turns right at the base of the bead just to kind of help build up a little bit so it locks in the bead. And then I'm gonna wrap back towards the tail again, keeping each turn, previous turn touching the turn, uh, or <laughs> each turn touching the previous turn. I'm building up my body, but also what it does, and the reason why I'm doing this is because when I go to turn my wire, um, if I tie it in along with the tail material, when I go to turn this wire, it actually influences and pushes that uh, Coke de Leon material around. And so I don't get a nice uniform looking tail. It may splay a little bit, which is fine. I don't mind that. Um, but I find that it actually uh, helps hold this in place much better. And uh, the reason why I do the tight turns coming down the shank of the hook is because this is such bright material and this is pretty sparse. You know, it's a flat uh, thread. 
and uh, it can show through sometimes. So I don't really necessarily want it to show underneath through the thread. Uh, so that's why I build the material nice and tight as I uh, tie it down and then as well as I come back um, again to help build the body and also to create that opaqueness of this brown olive thread base. So now that we got that set, got my, my thread right back to the bead. Uh, one thing that I do, if, uh, I'm going to pull the wire 90 degrees towards me and then come over the top. Now you'll notice the thread or the wire caused the <clears throat> the tail to splay a little bit. Had I wrapped that in simultaneously with the Coke de Leon material, it would have really started to twist and turn. So having it separated by a thread layer, you know, helps prevent that. So I'm going to come around one basically full turn, but then start leading my turns towards the bead. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put it right up against the bead and this will also help lock the bead down. So give it about two, three turns, a couple turns in front, and then go ahead and rotate your wire off. Okay. Now you notice it's so it uh, stabilize that bead there. All right. So that all looks good right there. Now my dubbing, some U or uh, ice dub in orange. And as always, this collar again is um, synonymous with a hot spot. So just a, that's even probably a little too much dubbing. So uh, just a really sparse pinch. Uh, sh lengthen out my thread there. Go ahead and dub onto my th thread. So your noodles, you know, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. All right. Now at this point, dubbing noodles nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and just take my UV resin, whatever your choice, Loon, Solar E, Solar Res, however you say it. Um, and then go ahead and just brush on a nice thin layer around the body of the fly. Now I will try to get that brush right into the slot of the bead there to help kind of help give it something to, to glue that bead down as well. I'll just give it a little bit on the thread. And as you have seen, if you have watched my previous videos, we'll whip finish the dubbing onto the collar. Whip finish until your dubbing is wrapped and then give it one more and then I will give it another set. Uh, three, four turns. Get it locked in there. And if you're really worried about durability, you probably could have uh, put some resin on the thread before you finish that second set to help it. Now, once I got it there, I trimmed away that little kind of stray tag of uh, frayed uh, thread. Take my UV light, go ahead and hit it. Now, if you notice that UV uh, light really lights up that uh, fluorescent orange thread. Now, actually, what I'll do is I'll turn off my lights here. And yeah, you can see that glow real nice. And uh, yeah. That's one reason why these fish like that. Whoa, what was that? A little alien ship flew by. <laughs> All right, turn these on. Okay, and I'm done with that light. And that is your thread Frenchie. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, yeah, size 14. Uh, this is a 3.3 millimeter slotted copper bead. Sorry for that, I didn't, I totally forgot to add that one in there, so. Anyway, uh, as far as fishing this, um, Really great pattern on your your nymphing setups, dry dropper rigs, anything like that. But because of that real slender profile of the body, it sinks extremely quick and fast. And um, one thing is, this is one of the patterns that uh, Jude was using while we were out on the water with with him. So you know you can check out that link right up here somewhere. All right, guys, uh, keep tying. Get out on the water soon. I know it's been cold down here in New Mexico. Uh, so when it warms up, definitely get out there and utilize this pattern. All right, all. Take care. Look forward to seeing you in 
new upcoming videos. If you haven't been a subscriber of the End Mock Time of Fly Fishing channel, please do so. Hit that button, hit that little logo in the bottom corner there, that'll get you subscribed. And uh, obviously hit the bell for notifications of new videos. And uh, you can find me Facebook, Instagram, look me up on Patreon, uh, and get more subscribers, which is great. And I appreciate that money does go towards helping me get these videos produced and uh, get the quality ramped up. All right, all take care. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.